and welcome to another episode of Pooches at Play. This week we've headed north to the beautiful Sunshine Coast. Yes, we've left the winter behind us and we've headed up to one of my favourite spots in Queensland to check out the pet friendly holiday sites. We're also going to meet some locals, show you some training tips along the way. And you get to meet a local surfing legend of the four-legged variety. You know what, I can teach you to surf if you want. Oh, you're going to be kidding. I am one of the most uncoordinated people you know. You'd be fine. Oh, no, only if you hold my hand. <laughs> I'm not going to hold your hand, it defeats the purpose. <laughs> Why don't we have a trot alongside you while you surf? Most people have heard of Noosa. It's one of the most popular holiday destinations in the country. And it's no wonder why. It's got beautiful coastlines, cafes, shopping, loads of restaurants. And if you've got your pooch along for the ride, you're spoilt for choice of the fun things to do together. Speaking of fun things to do, where's Morgan? Isn't he meant to do the travel pieces? Why am I doing the travel piece? I don't know. There's plenty of dog friendly cafes in and around Nisa, so you can enjoy a latte and puppuccino together while soaking up the year round sunshine that this beachside paradise has to offer. Dogs are not allowed on the Noosa main beach at any time of the year, but fortunately, there is an off leash dog beach at the end of Hastings Street in Noosa Woods. A day out at the beach with your dog can be a lot of fun for you both. However, dog beaches and parks can pose a risk, particularly if you're visiting new areas and aren't familiar with the other dogs and their owners. I met up with a nervous dog mum, Alicia, to provide some tips to help. Alicia, you're a bit of a newbie to the dog beach. What is it that you're concerned about the most? Um, I haven't taken the dogs to a beach before, right. um, just because um, Pippin is, she runs off and doesn't come back when okay. she gets off her lead. Really cool, yes. Um, Athena is a big, slobbery, gentle giant, but obviously <laughs> people look at her and see a bulldog and are sometimes intimidated. Some dogs can get a bit rough with her. Yes. And also I get quite a bit anxious because I'm not sure what the signs are um, when they see another dog, what whether What's they're happy that? or sad about that. Okay, <laughs> yeah, look at the problem at dog at beaches and parks is that owners don't always know what signs, they're not really reading the signs in their own dogs and other dogs properly. So some of the good signs that you want to look for when dogs are coming out to play with Athena and with Pippin is you want to see a dog doing a play bow. So it's when the dog sort of bows down and it's inviting them to play. Okay. Another one, if a dog does run up, it runs up to Athena, it might just give a little bit of a tag and run off again. That's yeah. an invitation. Come, come play with me. So yeah. then Athena might run up and do it again. And then they start mimicking. So when they are playing with each other, you want to see them doing the same action. So, you know, Athena might sort of run in and have a little bit of a rumble. They might play around a little bit. And then the other dog should do the same. So it's about taking turns. No one dog <laughs> should be getting more rough than the other or getting more of a go than the other. And if they've had a bit of a play and you're a little bit worried and they stop, and they give themselves a bit of a shake off, a bit like we, you know, might shake ourselves off. Yeah. That's a good sign because they're just kind of recalibrating themselves, you know, it's just a yeah, bit of a... I've seen her do that a few yeah, times. Resetting yeah, resetting herself okay. as well. Yeah. And what happens if there's kids around on the beach? Because I, I sometimes, like, I've got three girls, but um, obviously they're used to them. But if there's other kids running around... It can be a bit nerve-wracking with kids and dogs sometimes. The worst thing for a child to do when they see a dog is to run. Because okay. that's really inviting the dog to play with them. Yeah, okay. uh, so if, if the kids do see a dog, stop. They should turn their back, fold their arms and be really stiff and strong and avoid the dog. You know, really block them off from having any contact with them. Okay. And you just sort of step in there and just make sure though that they do not run. Running is one of the worst things that a child or anyone can do if they're frightened of a dog or trying to get away. And what are the bad signs to look for with other dogs? <laughs> yeah, look, it can be hard to read dogs' body language sometimes if you're not really used to it. Sometimes, you know, a dog might come into the play and it, it might have its tail up in the air. It's kind of on alert. That doesn't always mean it's a bad thing. It just means that it's not quite sure. The other dogs might sniff around and check it out. But then they all let it go and are all being quite comfortable, then that's okay as well. Okay. But you do want to watch that because things can escalate pretty quickly. So if a dog is looking a bit alert, tail up, you do want to just keep a firm control on that. And with the bulldog, you know, the big dogs, they do tend to like to play around the neck. So you just got to keep a really big eye on that. As I said, I really shut that down pretty quickly. Yep. The other thing is if one dog is just nipping at the other dog's neck or nipping at their heels and chasing them, again, that's not much fun. Darcy kind of gets that a bit and he's quick to let them know. Yeah. And if they're not reading the signs, so like a bigger dog going to a little dog and the little dog, you know, raising its, you know, say Athena went up to a little dog and the little dog is raising its lip and baring its teeth, you need to get her away because the other dog's feeling really anxious 
and after that comes a bit of a bite and then a fight can break out. And one of the biggest ways to invite a fight at a dog beach or park is to stand around in the middle chatting to other owners. Really, you don't want to be doing that. The dogs start to get rough, they start to get a bit bored. So no on the phone, looking down at the phone, forgetting about your dog, you are there for your dog. So keep walking, get them moving, and keep them entertained. Otherwise, they can start to get a little bit argy-bargy with one another. <laughs> okay. You feel a bit better now? I am, thank you. I think it's, yeah, we'll see how we go. Yeah, good, okay. Now we'll talk about the recall a little bit later. If you'd like some beach etiquette tips or some recall tips, visit the Pooches at Play website. And if you really need a hand to find a trainer, visit the NDTF website. Shall we go have a play? Yes, that'd yes, be great. Let's Thank take you. it. You guys ready? You, we're going to work on your I recall. Think more yes, than we ready. are. We're going to work on your recall. Yes, we are. Bringing home a puppy for the first time is exciting for everyone, but it's really important though to remember that those early experiences in the first few months of their life can either create a well-adjusted and confident dog, or it could pave the way for some anxiety and phobias. Yeah, let's remember that dogs, just the same as you and I, have emotional health, mm -hmm. um, they have feelings, and yeah, they're going to react differently to different stimuli in their environment. Think about the surfaces, mm -hmm. um, prepare your car, obviously, yes. um, for any potential mishaps. Yes. Um, but yeah, smells once again, feelings. Mm -hmm. uh, think about also maybe bringing a blanket or a soft toy, which has been with the, the mother dog. The mother, yeah. That's yep, a big absolutely. one. Like if you can, when you're picking up a puppy, if you can give the blanket so the mother and the siblings have been with it, so it's got that smell, it might provide some comfort in the car on the way home, won't yeah, it? Absolutely. And they can also get car sick and get yes. a little bit ill. Yeah. I mean, just the same as you and I, nausea, particularly <laughs> on a, a really full stomach. So let's, yeah, travel. Mm. Ideally, with you know less of a meal in the mornings. Yes. Um, and yeah, think about kind of the sensations once again of movement. So taking it step by step. Yes. Um, allowing them to basically interpret their surroundings in a natural manner. Mm. So ideally, you'll be travelling with somebody else. Yes. So you yourself, or you know the primary carer, can sit along and yeah, comfort our puppy along the, along the way and give the likes of treats. Yes, you know. rewarding that calm behaviour. Now it's also really important that the puppy is not a distraction to the driver. Yes. They are very distractible. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why a carrier, a secure carrier or a crate is really important so you can put puppy in there and keep them safe. Yep. And as Lee mentioned, someone sitting with them and rewarding all that calm behaviour is really good as well. Yeah. And we want to start slowly, don't we? Yeah. Mm. As we move into being a, an adult as well, we might think about harness even, but yes. that's another training lesson It is altogether. your harness. So, you know, if you've got a harness for safe car travel, it is uh, takes something to get used to. Absolutely. So really, a crate's probably the best option there, yeah. isn't it? And always uh, making sure that you stop mm -hmm. and let puppy out. Yes, yeah. I mean, for an adult dog, you know, given their kind of bladder capacity, we might think, once every hour, but with a pup, you know, we're a little bit smaller. Once again, we're adapting. Yes. Uh, maybe once every half an hour is a good idea. And as a vet, Lee, obviously, if they've only had their first vaccinations, Think about we don't their want immunity. them touching the floor, do Absolutely. we? So a uh, puppy pad is great for that. So making sure that you do stop along the way mm -hmm. so they have a chance to stretch their legs and putting them on the pad so that they can go to the toilet on there and not touch the ground is yeah. another good tip as well. Yep. But of course, they're probably going to go on journeys many times during their life. Absolutely. So that's why we want to make this really positive. So the best way to do that, as you said, is have someone with them. Yep. But also start really slowly. Yep, step by step. Mm. Um, let's think about, first of all, just sitting in the car, getting used to the environment, and once again, the smells, mm -hmm. um, and comforting along the way. And then slowly, I reckon, just turn, turn the, the car on and let them get used to that as well. Yep, absolutely. Those Movement. vibrations, once again, and kind of a few stop starts, maybe a couple of corners. Yeah, take it easy. Uh, just, yeah, I suppose travel for half a kilometre at a time mm -hmm. um, until we've 100% adapted to that motion throughout that ride. Yeah, so nice and positive and then you get puppy home but of course we want to make sure that home arrival is good as well, don't we? Yes, it's an exciting time and it's yeah easy to get overexcited. It does. Um, both for, for pup and for us humans but yeah, if we could set the stage for yeah a safe environment, a mm -hmm. puppy-proof environment. Yes. Uh, absolutely. Way to go. And so make sure the kids give the puppy some space when they get in as well. Puppy specific treats are really good for the car journey and even at home. So rewarding all that calm, positive environment so that they are feeling really secure. Everything's a wonderful experience. Yeah. And make sure your home is puppy-proofed as well. Yeah, lots of fun to come. Yes, lots of love to come, hey? Are you ready for your first car ride? Yeah. <laughs> 
go on holidays, it's really easy to get out of routine. And dental hygiene is no exception. Now, you might keep it up for yourself, but you can get a bit slack with your pooch. But Mia will tell you that if her teeth aren't in top condition, then it affects her general health, her heart, her kidneys, and it can cause oral pain. So how do you keep a dog's teeth clean when you're at home and on holidays? Well, you can use prescription dental food, you can use chews and treats that clean teeth, special solutions that go in water to keep plaque at bay, but the gold standard for yourself and your dog is to brush their teeth daily. You don't need to be complicated with this, you just need to stick to the cheek side of the teeth. And you can use a finger brush or a baby's toothbrush, but always use dog specific toothpaste because they will swallow it. If you do that every day, and you get your dog's teeth checked every six to 12 months for dental disease, then you should be fine. So if you're away on an extended holiday, make sure that you take them to the local vet to have their pearly whites checked out. Smart Pups is a not-for-profit organisation based on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland. It's dedicated to providing assistance dogs to children under 18 years of age with a range of special needs. Beck, what kind of assistance skills are these guys particularly taught? Uh, yes, so we train um, a range of dogs to help children with special needs. Mm -hmm. So we train a uh, seizure alert dog and medical alert dogs, so mm -hmm. diabetes one as well. Okay. Um, we also train mobility assistance dogs um, and they'll help basically turn on light switches, open up doorways, um, retrieve everyday household items um, and also autism assist dogs. So they'll provide safety in public environments mm -hmm. um, by tracking out a child that may abscond, okay. um, but also anchoring them at roadways and um, basically just also applying a deep pressure to calm a child throughout a meltdown. Is there a particular kind of breed or temperament that you need for these dogs? Yeah, absolutely. We're quite selective with the breeds that we work with for assistance dogs. So we um, train Labradors and Golden Retrievers, mm -hmm. basically because they are two breeds that really like to work and please a handler, but they're always seeking out um, that contact with people as well, which is exactly what we're after. Um, adding to that, we also uh, train Labradoodles. Mm -hmm. So they've got the Poodle Mix, um, which is also great for our children mm -hmm. that have allergies, um, they're not going to be of set off with yeah the hair all through the home. <laughs> Which a Labrador can do. Absolutely. <laughs> and what yeah. about temperament? So you want all different sorts of temperaments in the sense that you want some dogs really eager and high energy for perhaps like your seizure alert dog, yes. but they're always going to be on the go and be looking out for a change. Um, but then you also want your calmer dogs um, that are going to reduce the anxiety in a household perhaps of a child that has autism. So you want them to be much calmer so their energy feeds off onto the child mm. um, and essentially helps them day to day getting through the community. And then you'll match them up to what yes, issue they need absolutely. to work the, best for. Yeah, the matching process is a really key part in everything. Um, you're not just thinking about what is going to be suitable for the dog because at the end of the day you want the dog to excel in a role that they enjoy mm. but you also want to make sure that the child's needs are met as well. And what's the key to keeping a smart pup at the top of its form? Yeah, there's a lot of things to consider uh, when looking after and training an assistance dog. Um, you really want to give them a lot of exercise to burn off any of that energy and let them still be a dog and keep them nice and balanced. Um, and then obviously all of their training that they need to do daily but of course um, diet is another really big yes. one for us so um, all of our dogs are on the big dog bath raw diet mm -hmm. um, and that basically just helps facilitate those beautiful shiny healthy coats and then also basically help with their development physically as they're progressing from a puppy right through to that 14 months of age when they're placed with their child. People don't realise how important diet can be to a dog's behaviour and have you found some improvements since they've been on a raw food diet? Yeah, absolutely. Our dogs have been on the um, raw diet now with Big Dog for about three years. Okay. Um, so we've had a really big chunk of time there to mm. really see the changes coming off more of a dry diet and it's yeah, just completely suitable for a working dog. So, oh, great. Yeah. Not only do Big Dog feed the entire group of dogs in training, they also donate 10 cents from every Big Dog product sold, providing over $120,000 in food and donations to Smart Pups last year. It costs around $30,000 to raise and train one of these guys, doesn't it, Beck? It absolutely does, mm. yes. So to find out how you can help, visit the Big Dog website to find your local stockers and help raise some funds for Smart Pups. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Once Lara was off meeting some smart pups, I met another very smart pup on the Sunshine Coast, Hugsy and his owner Paul to get some tips and things to do with your dog whilst in the area. 
Paul, what's there to do in the area with your dog? Oh, well, look where we are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, look, I, I live down the beach and, and Hugs is with me, so we're, we're down here 24 7. So any chance we get, we're down the beach and we live on the Sunshine Coast, and, and it's some of the best beaches in the world. And, and um, fortunately, we've got some really good um, dog parks and dog beaches. So, yeah, this is you're what not, I love to do. You're not short of a place to take the dog. Yeah, absolutely. And then, like, he's got his life jacket on. I guess you take him out in the waves. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we've obviously progressed um, from beginner to kind of expert, I suppose. And, yeah. And, um, yeah, we do some competitions, believe it or not. Yeah, I do, I do. <laughs> Which, are, yeah, every year the, uh, they have the Australian Dog Surfing Championships. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's a real highlight of our lives. That, but yeah, but we get, we train like any other athletes, yeah, yeah, I suppose, yeah, yeah. and we and we get out in the waves. What kind of dog is he? What kind of breed? Um, he's a Spanador. I like just saw him as a puppy and fell in love, as yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah. But but he's turned out to be the most um, probably the most perfect surfing dog ever. Yeah. Because he's got the um, the robust of a Labrador, and he's got kind of the water traits of a Spaniel. Yeah, yeah right. So yeah, he's unbelievable. So yeah. And how did you get into it? Like, was there just a time when you were out on a board and he decided that he was going to jump on with you, or was it just a slow progression? <laughs> Oh, I actually reckon that yeah, he, he probably saw me surfing all the time and said, "I want a part of this when he's yeah. a puppy." But, but yeah, it's just it's just something that we can do, mm -hmm. you know, as a dog owner. I mean, I love spending time with with hugs, and yeah. and it's just something that we can do together. And you know, we started off just in the flat water and yeah. the canals, and and then we kind of progressed to surfing, and it was yeah, it's just been a progression from there. And and he's actually kind of. Um, taught himself to actually um, kind of hold his breath, believe it or not. <laughs> and, and we do, yeah. yeah, and we yeah. do kind of get, you know, dumped by the wave. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and we both go under and I pop up and he pops up. And I mean, really small waves are best. Yeah, and we yeah, just yeah. have a bit of a play and yeah, it's right. a bit of a muck around. So yeah, yeah. Are there any other beaches that you'd go to just to let them off and run around in the area? Well, we're beach people. So yeah, yeah beaches are always number one for us. But yeah, I mean, Point Cartwright, it's, um, it's a really good area for dogs, but they, if you go kind of like early morning or late afternoon, that's off leash. Yeah, okay. And then in the middle of Point Cartwright, they actually have um, an off leash area in the middle of Point Cartwright. Yeah. And it's beautiful. Like it's a, the dogs love it. They're cruising around and sniffing and playing, and yeah. it's really fun. So yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, I'd love to see you out on the board and see what you can do. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, the waves are quite small today, but um, yeah, we'll have a go. Sweet. <laughs>
Mm. The other thing that I, I like about Pet Stock, having met Travis, one of the area managers, yeah. how Pet Stock provided 15 pallets of dog food mm, to, yes. to Townsville. Now that, that to me, I don't believe any other pet food company right. has done that. Yeah. So that, that to me shows their commitment rather than the monetary side mm. as to what they can do for animals, which yeah. we really appreciate. Yeah, wonderful. With PTSD, I was uh, having angry outbursts, mm -hmm. um, depression, anxiety, uh, feeling of loneliness, isolation. Um, I didn't want to go out anywhere. Okay. I, um, I didn't want to associate with people mm. at all. Just keep to yourself and Very stay much away so. from the world. Yeah, I just focused on my work and yes. used to work long hours just to keep myself busy. But then what made you decide that a dog was, was going to help things and maybe possibly turn things around? I've always liked dogs, but um, my friends who've got dogs, I tend to find they were calming me and I end mm. up spending more time with the actual dog I than I do <laughs> with, the, with my friends. So um, I suppose in some ways he saved my life because yeah. I've got major depression. So mm -hmm. there were times there where I was really black. I don't know whether I'd be alive or um, so I think he has saved my he life. saved your life. And changed my life. Oh, um. How wonderful. <laughs> so not only are dogs like Noah here having their lives saved, I guess, in the process, they're also making a, a big, potentially saving your life as well in the process. Oh, exactly. Two lives saved yeah. in one. Oh, wonderful. If you'd like to find out more about the work of Young Diggers, you can visit their website. Or if you'd like to find out how you can help Pet Stock Assist so that they can keep helping pets and people in need, visit theirs. Thank you so much, Bob. Thank you. Thank you, Noah. Hope you pass your L's with flying colours. I think you will. Would you like to win a Pawson Travel Pack valued at over $2,000 for you and your furry friend? One lucky viewer will win this great prize, including a $250 pet stock gift card and travel essentials bundle, a $300 easy dog travel pack, an adaptal or feel away calm pack, a year's supply of Vita pet treats, and $500 worth of big dog free dried bites and snuffle mat. Simply tell us one of the locations you've seen us visit during Series 4 and why you love travelling with your pet. It's that easy. Visit the Pooches at Play website to enter. Well, that's it for another episode, which means our time in Queensland has also come to an end. I had so much fun on the Sunshine Coast, but now we're going to head to the chilly south. Ooh, I'm not a cold weather fan. I love it. I no. can wear all my nice clothes. It's good. Yeah. Well, I do get to hang on the couch with Darcy in a blanket a little bit more. That's it fun. Is that. Hey, we'll see you next episode. <laughs> see you. Who's going to drink? Uh, paper, rock, scissors. <gasps> <laughs> it doesn't work like that. You don't just... <laughs>